actually are challenging. We are challenging things. We are disrupting status quo. We are, um, you know, we are asking people to really interrogate, reflect, and think about how uh, how we want to achieve change, who we want to achieve change, who we want to drive that change. So I'm I'm really impressed about the We Lead program because that is the premise of this program and this particular training is aimed at equipping us with the skills to be able to lead disruptively, to disrupt spaces and to change, shift narratives so that you know we, we have more inclusive conversations on SRHR and inclusive policies on, on sexual and reproductive health rights. We have laws that somehow favor the women and somehow backlash the women. When we talk about um, contraceptive in the society, a lady cannot walk, just walk to the, you know, we have a lot of contraceptive. A lady cannot just walk to the, maybe a pharmacy and want to buy condom. Like, to them it's like, man, you're, you're, you're spoiled, you're corrupt, you get. Nobody wants to, ha nobody wants her child or her relative to be associated with you because this is the kind of person you are, you get. So when it comes to abortion in my country, there are laws that doesn't really favor abortion. The only way abortion is legalized in Nigeria is maybe the child or the, the mother is at risk. If both are at risk, then abortion can be carried out. Trans women who sell sex, they've been denied justice because clients raped them, clients beat them up, they failed to even pay for the sex that they have consumed. And then when we report to police, we always find those injustices because we are sex workers and it's a living because we all believe that sex work is work. So when we don't get justice at the end of the day, it triplicates us down and um, it makes us live in fear in our very own country. So we literally have, we don't demand, but also access the sex and reproductive health services in both health facilities, but also national wide in our country. Older generations are, you know, shied away from me because of the, you know, gender norms, the tradition, the religious factor. Uh, but I believe that young people are starting to be open up, up, are starting to open up to, you know, having conversation around, you know, sex, having sex education, and understanding that this is something that we cannot continue to shy away from because it is very important, and we need to have this conversation so that we are able to be well informed and we're able to live our life to the fullest. I think basically just seeing young people demanding for their sexually productive health rights, uh, for them actually acknowledging uh, that they have a role to play and they want their voices to be heard, not just to be seen, but to be heard by the policy makers uh, around the SRHR spaces. Uh, for them saying that when they go back to their home countries, there's a lot to be done in terms of advocacy getting to work with new people in terms of partnerships, doing evidence-based advocacy, um, getting allies, you know, being better organized so that they are able to deal with opposition. So we had a number of sessions in which we were bringing to life some of the things that the young activists have been working um, already on. And we were trying to, to take this um, already um, existing knowledge and put it into um, maybe structured uh, kind of uh, presentation. So um, they are going to take home the advocacy strategies. So they are drafts and we really hope that this is going to be um, a way for them to expand the work they're already doing, to seek new partnerships, to, um, to disrupt the spaces in which they know there's a lot of opposition because we know on SRHR there is opposition, there's going to be more opposition, and the idea is really to structure, um, to, fit, to, to also build some sort of um, alliance and also uh, being stronger together basically. So I think that's what also most of them took away from this training is building an alliance already with the people who were in the room. The different kind of advocacy from other countries and mostly 
uh, the way, the steps of their advocacy, the way they go into it, and most of their explanation, how they go about it, and what they tend to achieve. We just have to take it back and see where we could just bring it down, modernize it to suit our country and see how we could use it to make change because definitely we need it. We've been doing it our own way, our own perception, at least spice it up a little bit. Bring in from the little Kenya dolls, you bring in from the little Uganda dolls, you bring in from, you just spice it up and see what we could, it's just, we just need a positive outcome out of it. So we need to make a little change or a huge change, but all we just need is to make sure we come out with something positive and better. We are a strategic partner in the first case, so we move and walk the whole journey together with the civil society organization. Being a strategic partnership is all a, it's a journey for all of us. So we have to be there with our partners at different levels. So we are here to show our solidarity with the, the different uh, organizations that are here, uh, coming from different parts of Africa, I think in five countries. So we are here to show our solidarity and our support. Uh, SRHR is one of the uh, key priorities for the Dutch government. Uh, the Dutch government believes that uh, SRHR saves life and uh, it's very crucial and critical for realization of SDGs. I think it was a great space, you know, I, I could feel it even though I wasn't part of it because um, spaces where we bring uh, different people uh, are not easy in terms of really holding and having genuine conversations. So I hope with the same spirit you will take it to the national level trainings and that we'll be able to do the same. I also want to thank um, and recognize our partner uh, who has really made this possible, uh, working and being led by HIVOS, but also the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, for the Netherlands. I want to send a message, go tell them, this is the consortium that rocks. This is the real consortium <laughs> because we are about the rights holders and we are about um, really uh, making a difference and ensuring that there's inclusion, ensuring that there's intersectionality, but also challenging some of the not so easy and uh, issues. I keep pushing the message. Um, I think as a consortium, we are really open to hear um, how we can make this work really work. It's just not about implementing a project, but it's really about changing the lives and making sure that um, when we talk about inclusion, it is about inclusion. Mm -hmm.